Hi everyone, in this week's video I'm going to run through my Lightroom editing process from start to finish and I'm going to try and do it quick fire style, so I'm going to try and do my edit in 5 minutes or less. Which is going to be pretty hard considering I need to try and explain what I'm doing, but I'm certainly up for the challenge. Now the image in question that I will be editing is one that I actually took this morning at sunrise um, at a local lighthouse and there was an absolutely beautiful blanket of sea mist, it looked extraordinary. I really hope I've managed to do that incredible scene some justice. Now I actually took two images this morning um, because of the high dynamic range. One was exposed for the shadows, one was exposed for the highlights and you can see those raw images on screen right now. Those are the images that I am going to be editing, so let's jump in. The stopwatch is ready to go, so here we go. The first step is to select both images, right click, we go to Photo Merge HDR. Here we just need to select Auto Align and nothing else, we select Merge. This is going to combine the dynamic range from both of those images into a single image. My computer is powered by hamster, so it is very slow, so this could be costly here time wise. Come on, there we go, I think we've got our merge, that's our merge. So the next step here is I want to draw in the highlights and then I want to give the shadows a fairly healthy boost here because in the bottom right hand corner we're losing a lot of detail in those shadows. I'd like to give the whites a boost across the image but I'm scared about the area around the sun so I'm going to draw in a little mini radial filter there and then I'm going to pull my whites up and that protects that area around the sun there and stops the highlights being blown out in that part of the image. Next I just want to give uh, Dylan some clarity to the image and then a bit of vibrance and a little bit of saturation but not too much, I really don't want to overcook the image at all. Next on the list is split toning. Now I want to introduce a little bit more colour into the highlights on the clouds but I don't want to introduce it into the back of the lighthouse, into these shadows. So I go to the highlights part, I'm going to give uh, an orange hue and I'm just going to dial in a little bit of saturation to that. But this effect is only very, very subtle. Okay. Um, next on the list is detail. Now I want to dial in a sharpening rate of 60, uh, move the detail slider fully over to 100, then I hold down Alt on my keyboard, drag the masking slider to the right, and what we're trying to do here is just apply the masking um, uh, of the sharpening just to the bits that I want, which are essentially the lighthouse and the clouds in the image. I don't want it applied to the areas of no detail, such as the sky and the sea down here. That's it for detail. Next, we're going on to lens corrections. How are we doing for time? Yeah, we're about halfway. I am going to apply the lens corrections automatically. That gets rid of any vignetting in the corner and um, also gets rid of any distortions, but it looks like there is still slight vignetting up in this corner. So just manually, I'm just gonna just slide this slider just slightly to the right. Very minute differences, but it makes, uh, makes a big difference, I think. Um, this cloud, I hate it, it's going, so I'm getting the spot removal tool. I'm dragging across it like that and then I'm going to make sure that it samples a bit of the sky to make a nice correction there and that is much better. I've got some ugly dust spots here so I'm going to correct those with the spot removal tool as well. I probably need to um, clean my sensor. There's a lot of these I think and you tend to get them up in the top corners when you're shooting on clear days like this, they become very apparent. If I had more time I'd spend longer on this process by the way just to make that clear. But I've got rid of the, uh, the obvious ones there. Next on my list is probably a graduated filter in at the top of the image so I'm going to draw down that gradient 
and what I'm trying to achieve here is I just want to bring out the blue of the sky so I'm just going to dial down the temperature ever so slightly and also just draw in those highlights a little bit and it's very subtle but you can see that it's bringing out the blue across the top of the scene there and that looks a lot better and the next thing and the final thing on my list is to go to uh, right click on the image edit in Photoshop so we're opening the image in Photoshop here will I get this done in time we have got 50 seconds left here we go so we go to the top filter we go to lens correction and what I'm trying to correct here is the lighthouse you can see it's leaning slightly to the right that's caused by distortions in perspective and the lens so I go to custom I go to vertical perspective just draw that over to the side to the right there that's looking much better then I just need to crop in because essentially the top of the image has been bent away from me. Just need to crop that in. Can I get this done in time? Very sloppy with my cropping. Done. And we go to the file, save, back into Lightroom, and our image should be there. Done. really pleased how that final image has turned out it's striking yet simple at the same time and it totally surpassed my expectations for the morning now obviously the uh, editing process that I've just gone through now was for a bit of fun to show you how quickly you can edit images and how Lightroom doesn't need to be as scary as some people make it out to be. Um, the final edit, edit I did do on this shot was slightly longer and I did make a few extra changes. Um, so I removed the cloud, an extra cloud towards the middle of the, the shot. And I also controlled the highlights a little bit more in and around the actual sun. But other than that, the editing process was exactly the same. Um, and I would say a, a sort of key message is I wouldn't suggest editing your images in such a hurried, time pressured way. Certainly don't set yourself a stop clock. Um, but um, there's a lot to be said for editing your images quickly and going with your gut instinct and not trying to overthink things because inevitably the more time you spend in post processing, the greater the risk that you might over edit your image and I've done it I've done it lots I, I still ask myself whether I sometimes do it and I, I think it's important to ask yourself that question where that boundary sits for you um, but I, I always like to try and keep my images natural looking and I don't really want them to look like sort of Pixar CGI which some photographers do start to stray towards in my opinion um, but yeah I think um, I think there's a lot to be said for simple quick uh, and efficient editing without overthinking things and just going with your gut instinct and, and, and sticking with it um, so I hope today's video has been useful and give you a little bit of insight into my editing process hopefully you might picked up a few tips along the way or just generally it's just showing you um, how easy it can be uh, if you've got any thoughts on my editing process or just Lightroom in general pop them down below and if you've got any comments on the actual image I have shown you today on through the editing process pop them down uh, below in the comments I'd be delighted to hear your thoughts and um, yeah that's about it I'm actually surprised I haven't been joined by the cat today cat is always around so that's highly suspicious it probably means that she's destroying something somewhere else in the house so i'll probably best wrap the video up there thanks very much for watching today and if you haven't yet subscribed hit that button below for future videos from me and i'll see you all soon take care